how to, how to, how to raise children. How to raise children. To raise children. Yeah. Sounds good. And the link to make a donation because we are here. Not to just learn and grow, but we're also here to make a difference for people who need it the most right now are those Ukrainian refugees who are under the attack in the war. So if you can make donation, 10, 20, 35, 50 dollars, I would greatly appreciate it if you can just make a donation. If you're broke, don't worry about it. So I want to thank you for being here. Today we're going to go over, again, seven and a half types of children, characters, children, and how to raise them, zero to 14. So then I have a question for you. First of all, who are moms or dads here? Raise your hands. All right. And what do you think children need the most? Love. 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 What Love. else? What else? Just attention. Yeah. Okay. Keep Dis thinking. Discipline. Mm, okay. Um, by the way, that is something that they don't need. But okay, one thing by the way, this I mean structure, not necessarily. you meaning then not so much routine, yes, okay, 100%. that's different. By the way, I'll be honest with you, you chose a lecture, a program that is very confrontational. I thought to keep it for the second half, so you might be confronted, you might be hearing things that you don't like. When I was preparing and getting ready for this lecture for the past two months. I'm kidding you not. My stomach was flipping right and left. You will be experiencing that today, whether you're online or here. Instead of, because again, it will be confrontational, don't try to argue with me or try to prove your point. Be with it so you can get the most out of it. And what I'm trying to do is put a seed in you of something new. And if you're open to it, something gonna start shifting. And I'm asking that for just three hours. And after three hours at one o'clock, you're like, whatever Alisa said, I don't like it. You can throw it away and put back on whatever that you know. But for three hours, stay open. Can I ask you of that? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Because I love how Vedic philosophers and uh, spiritual gurus are saying, you can bring a horse to the river, but you cannot make a horse drink a water. Mm -hmm. So I won't be able to change you. I can just inspire you, motivate you, give you knowledge. But what you do with it, it's your choice. They have a deal? So keep looking. What else children need? Now we're thinking since you chose 0 to 14, I would like for you to think 0 to 5 especially. What children need? Yes. Exceptions. Exceptions? Yes. Acceptance. You mean acceptance. Acceptance. Ah, okay. Because I heard exceptions. That's why I'm like, okay, which exceptions? Which? But acceptance, okay, wonderful. What else? Keep looking. Absolutely. Very good. What else? Guidance. Guidance. Wonderful. What else? Support. Support. Absolutely. Part of life. Love. Guidance. Part of that. Anything else? Very good, my friends. So, kids, first of all, a child from that is three years old and the seven years old, it's not the same daughter and son. They're malleable and they change all the time. And the child that is seven or tw a 14 year old, it's also not the same child. Or a 14 year old and 40 years old, it's not the same child. But I see sometimes mothers who has a 40 year old and they come and they, oh, I love you so much. But she did not transition to how to treat her son at age 40. And where the mothers need to transition. So now I need someone's help, Alona, probably yours. I need you to write zero to five. Um, Carolyn, can I ask you to get a marker from that wall over there? Thank you so much. We're going to write it down so you can everyone see right here, right, right there. Mm -hmm. I'll hold it and you can write it down. Thank you so much. So zero to five, our children are either kings or queens. So write it down. Zero to five. Zero to five. Children are kings and queens, king and queen. What do you think when I say king is, kings and queens? What does that mean? It's all about them. It's all about them. If they're kings and queens, what they can and what they can't do. They can do everything. They can do everything. What else? They're empowered. They're what? They're like empowered. Empowered. So if you are working for a king or queen, what is your main job? 
To serve them, absolutely. We are at their service. Yeah? So, what does that mean? A king and queen can do anything. Anything. And your job is to... Um, it will go away. And your job is to serve them and make sure that at all time, whatever that they need, you give them. And so now, kings and queens has three, um, how would you call it, parts to it. So the number one, what they need, who wants to guess what again? More than anything, what do they need? Love. Their children. Because the king and the queen is we're just telling, giving them a role. They're not really kings and queens. But we treat them as the kings and queens and we give them the role. And so number one, what kings and queens need is love. Unconditional love. And a lot of it. Because if, and I see that a lot, uh, some women who would come to my lecture, uh, not lectures, to my sessions, and they would hear this knowledge, they're like, oh, I missed out on this love. So at 12 years old, they're trying to give this unconditional love to their daughters and kings. I mean, their boys, their sons. And guess what? It's late. The train is gone. Like door is closed. It's gone. And you won't be able to uh, get it back. And so when you meet a boy, uh, I mean, a man and a woman, and you see they're needy, they're insecure. Guess what happened? Guess what happened? They did not receive that love from what age? Zero to, five. Zero to five. But now, what happens in the modern society? We think that I can work full time and I can give my child to daycare and they, strangers, can give them love. But do you think a person who makes 15 bucks an hour can give them love? Unconditional, especially. Do you think anybody can give them love? They can care for them. But you know what? The children, especially zero to six, if they cry, by the way, uh, I can't remember the psychologist's name who was in the 60s. Benjamin something. I can't remember his name. Yes. What he said, that if a child cries, let him cry out. Mm -hmm until they stop. And moms in France, in United States, in Russia, they're still using this me uh, methodology. But the child, after a minute, if it's crying and the mom is not picking him up, guess what child feels? It feels fear. And that fear um, trans uh, translates later in life, the child doesn't feel safe. But now it's an adult, but it doesn't feel safe. It doesn't feel safe in the marriage. It doesn't feel safe in the relationship. It doesn't feel safe at work. It's constantly in a state of fear because mom was ignoring when he was crying because he wanted to be held. He wanted to be breastfed. It wanted to uh, go to the bathroom, be changed, right? Kids crying for different reasons, but they are calling mom. It's their language. And if mom was ignoring for three, five minutes, the child is already feel this abandonment and fear that the world is not safe. And by the way, there's nothing you can do later to undo that. So my question, do you know, maybe you, maybe someone close, that you have this internal fear that the world is not safe? Does anyone here feels like that? Do you want to raise your hand? Yeah, thank you. And so... Later in life, you can go for many, many years of therapy, but there's no guarantee that you will be able to overcome that because the damage, the root is already broken. And so during the stage again, zero to five, it's fundamental that the child receives love, love, love. And some parents think, oh, one, two hours after daycare is enough. In the United States, is the huge phenomenon where mother gives birth. At three months, she gives the children to daycare. I know a mom who has a twins right now who are four months old. And guess where they are? In daycare. And now do you think the person who is making 15 bucks an hour going to really care to change diaper on time and do it with a smile? No. It's just another diaper. Change through away next. And if the children is crying and she needs to feed this one and this one and that one, she really gonna care and jump and take care of your child? 
probably not, right? And so children during this stage uh, need more than anything, not just love, a lot of love, but unconditional love. And so... <clears throat> Um, our main goal as a parent to help them to enter this world feeling whole, complete, um, and perfect, but not perfect from the space of perfection that they got everything we could give them. But as a parent who grew up, by the way, if you grow up with only one parent, only mom or only dad, consider you already disadvantaged. By the way, I'm one of those kids whose parents got divorced at age five, so I was growing up with mom. And I'm already got to admit, honestly, that I'm already disadvantaged. So who else were growing up with just mom or dad? Yeah. And we want to be authentic about it because I see a lot of moms who are saying, it's okay if um, my son or my daughter doesn't uh, see a dad. It's okay, I can be it all, mom and dad. But let's be honest, can a mom be both mom and dad? Absolutely not. Because what a child wants from mom is this nurture and love and feminine energy. Because only to mom, children usually come and share everything. Mom, this happened or this happened, this happened or that happened, and he is waiting for her love and number two, protection more than anything children need protection and now my question zero to five what kind of protection do they need from themselves because they can harm themselves from you the parents who could scream and yell at them because you're working full-time and from everyone else because I know a person whose wife has a really severe depression. She lives with antidepressants, and one time her two-year-old got all of the pills, and she didn't even know about it because she was sleeping. She fell asleep. Her husband comes home, and he sees the child is laying around, the pills, maybe a few left, and he obviously woke his wife up. And the good thing, he came two hours early. And they end up in emergency doing the cleansing. The doctor said that he didn't take so much. He was just sleeping. But still, it's mom's responsibility to take a child away from all the danger. Corners, electric outfits. My mom at age two and three was telling me, Alisa, don't touch electric outlets. Don't touch electric outlets. Do you think children at age two and three has analysis? They don't until five. And so telling a child don't attach electric out, uh, outlets, what do you think they're going to do? They're, they're going to touch it. So my mother decided that she needs to go shopping. While I was sleeping, I woke up. Mom is not around. Guess what I did? I went for electric outfit, <laughs> outlet. And guess how far I flew? Six, seven feet. And I was unconscious. I don't know how long. And then my mom comes back. And I know I did something wrong. But I didn't know what I did. I just knew something wrong, but I didn't even know. I didn't have the concept because child's brain is not developed yet. Obviously, I never touched the outlet later, but it's our job to protect by covering it. I know that we grew up in the 80s when there was no thing to cover the outlet, right? Yeah, my mom did this one. She said, Let's, you shouldn't, she said, you should, shouldn't touch the outlet, but if you touch this, will happen. I should take the needle with my little sister. Oh, I it's should... even worse. Okay, but then I never touched it. It just was a little bit. <laughs> but <laughs> it's even worse because, again, this is fear tactics. Because I remember when our son was three years old, our grandparents were say, if you're not going to eat your veggies and if you're not going to eat a grits, your colon going to get sticky and glued and it's going to come out of a poop. <laughs> You know, R R Russian uh, grandparents style. They're kind of strange, you know. And do you think a child has a concept of what colon is? That it's going to come out of poop and it's going to get glued? No, they have no idea. Or sometimes I go to the playground. In our playground, we have one girl, a mom, probably in her early 30s. 
and she has a three-year-old and her three-year-old is running she's like don't run you're gonna break your legs don't don't go on a swing you're gonna break your arms and she's constantly saying you're gonna break this you go oh my god child doesn't know what break legs is their analysis has not developed yet it happens at five but moms are constantly getting upset i told you not to run you're gonna break your legs I told you not to do this. You see, you fell. And then the daughter fell and she has wooden chips in her mouth. And she says, she comes to her and screaming at yelling, I told you not to run. I, wow, right? And instead of trying to scream, open your mouth, just say, oh, look at the bird flying. All you need is to redirect the children. The bird is flying. Look at the airplane. Look at the flower. Look at the leaf. Uh, and take the chips out. But the basic education parents are lacking because, again, zero to five, you just got to kiss them, love them, and spoil them. Spoil them with a lot of love. And the number three, so we went over love, protection. Another thing I remember, Alexei was coming to the kitchen a lot. And in our previous uh, place where we lived, you can gently touch the knob on the stove and the fire would start. And so he was constantly touching. So we <laughs> bought fans. So nobody, no dog, and no Alexei could go to the kitchen because he was playing with the fire. And whose responsibility to protect them is ours. Also, what children do during this stage, they're curious, they're trying. So as I'm pouring the flowers everywhere with water, he sees on the computer the picture of us standing in a botanical garden. So he thinks, Flowers, water, he takes water, and guess what he's doing? <laughs> putting the water on the computer, putting the water on TV when he sees flowers. Can I be angry at him? No, no, but moms would say, why would you pour the water on the computer? You broke my computer. No, it's your job to put computers away. I left it on the sofa. He doesn't have a concept as a two and a three-year-old. We cannot get even angry at them. Because what happens when we don't give love to children during this stage, as I shared, the, like a subway, door closes, train is gone, you won't be able to catch it. But if you scream at the child, guess what they're feeling? Yeah. More than that, what are they saying and thinking to themselves? I'm not. Nastier than that. I'm not loved. Nastier than that. Worthy. What is that? Not worthy. Worse than that. Mm -hmm. Worse. I'm guilty? No. They hate me. Mom and dad hate me. And we have to be responsible because we, as a mothers and parents, when we work, we're exhausted. Men can handle 40 hours a week. Woman can. And when a woman is exhausted, she puts stress on who? On children. And now you have to understand one graph. I need this. Um, what happens is, here's children. Let me write it down here. Here's the child. Here's mom. Here's dad. And here we'll get to. A person who is older and who is dependent, emotionally dependent, cannot, no, 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 the person who has dependence cannot dump emotions on dependence. Do you understand? So if the person is dead, can he dump his emotions on wife and kids? He cannot. It can go up. So if a child has negative emotions, stress or anxiety, who can he go to? Mom. Mom. Dad also, it's just dad is most of the time is not available. He can go to dad, but for the most part, it goes to mom. If mom <coughs> has negative emotions, who does she go to? Dad. dad. Can she go to child? Yes. No. But a working mom who works 40 hours a week or who has a stressful job, what does she do? She does this. And if a dad, husband does, dumps his emotions, he emotionally violates them. But in our society, it happens right and left. When I record videos, most of the men are telling me, what, I don't have emotions? You have emotions, but who can you go to? Your dad. Huh? To God. 
or to your like mentors? Most of the people don't have now foundation and relationship to God, so we can call it a friend, but not just a friend, older friend. A wiser friend, not age-wise, who is wiser. It could be mentor, it could be guru, it could be someone that can listen to him and advise him wisely. But men don't have this concept and what they do, they constantly come home and they dump their emotions on kids or wife as well. And those women are telling me, no, my husband, it's okay for him to dump emotions on him. He's a human because we're living in a quality world. But in this equality world, kids suffer the most. Women and kids, because women, again, is not designed to work 40 hours a week. And kids are not designed to be in jail, daycare, and kindergarten. To them, it's a jail. Cute jail, but it's a jail. I was growing up in daycare and kindergarten. I remember when I was a two-year-old, thank you. Um, oh, thank you so much. Um, and I remember when I was a two-year-old, kids were biting me. Two-year-olds were biting me. And the teacher were constantly slapping my fingers. So when my mother was taking me on the bus to the daycare, I was screaming from top of my lungs. I didn't even have a language. But I was ignored. And most of the parents don't hear children. Who wants to relate and raise your hand? that you were in daycare or kindergarten. Yeah. And this is a huge, it's a huge disadvantage. Because a child feels safe in which environment? Home. Home. Absolutely. Home is the only place where a child feels at peace, safe, and loved. And some women say, well, I'm so unstable. It's better to send them to kids because I'm too tired. I get exhausted. I don't have patience. Then my question is, why would you have children? Why would you have children? Any questions so far? Yes. How about developing social skills uh -huh. if you're not going to kindergarten? Great question. <clears throat> the biggest excuse mom use is kids need to socialize. By the way, from zero to five, kids need mom and dad. Love from dad and mom. They need a lot of social skills and you know the healthiest way. Who wants to guess how you can take your kids to socialize with other kids? Any ideas? Play dates. Learn. Play dates. What else? Wonderful. Some classes. Some classes. Birthday. Birthdays. But the main key here is that mom or dad should be with whom? With the children. Because the child goes on the playground or catch air or some classes where they play with doll, with sand, or on the swings. It plays for an hour or two, then it's hungry. It wants to go to the bathroom. It's tired. Some kid throw the sand at him and mom does what? Picks him up and say bye-bye, everybody, and she leaves. By the way, this is a best environment because mom talks to other moms on the playground or birthday or catch air. Or she just looks at her kid and kid is doing plays with Sam. By the way, kids and zero to five don't play with each other. They play next to each other, but not with each other. And so that's why they don't need to socialize. You just take them to the playground and they play with themselves. And if the kid has a toy, they can just take the kid. But they're not interested to play with other kids. So it's an illusion and a lie that system created. By the way, who created the system of daycare and kindergarten? Who knows? Government. Government. But prior to that, wealthy people mm -hmm. who wanted the poor people to work for them. Mm -hmm. And so they created a daycare and kindergarten so that it will be convenient for them that parents can perform and work yeah. and so they can make more money and then government added there's a great system we can make everyone work and so we are inside of the system and the system breaks us and we're breaking who our children our children, our children. because again they're not <clears throat> belong in the prison because when we get tired of a husband and wife do we send them to a cute prison no, we're not. 
But we're, we're doing that with our kids. Any questions? Just addition. I was witnessing in one of the kindergartens, actually, the, the child was... Louder, beginning. louder. Uh, I was witnessing uh, when I was picking up my child that other kid would start eating the uh, stone. Yeah. Just, and and uh, of course, because of the... I mean, it's great kindergarten, but... It's just so many kids and so many, uh, so Thank you. Um, not a lot of uh, people who's watching over them. And I actually pointed, but please look, but I mean, he's eating the stones. Yeah. It's very bizarre. Thank but, you. Uh, so Alina just said that she was in the daycare or kindergarten where she saw other kids eating stones. Absolutely. And that happens right and left because there's not enough staff to watch all the kids. And again, most of the teachers who are working in the kindergarten, these are single moms who left their kids somewhere to take care of this, your kids. And how do they, you think they feel? Frustrated. Frustrated, hurt, sad, and angry. Do you get that? And so who are they putting these feelings on? Our children. Our children. And again, moms have an idea because I see a lot of moms who are saying, well, I have to work. I have to pay bills, even though she has a wife. I mean, she has a husband. And she demands other teachers who are pay, getting paid only $15 an hour to do a good job. This is kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And they demand that. They're like, no, you got to do a good job. Why my kid had a dirty diaper? Well, because she has seven other eight kids. And she'll lie to you that, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I just didn't see it. It happened in the 15 minutes. It could have been two, three hours. Because she's making only $15 an hour and she's resigned and hurt. She wants to be with her children. Yeah. All right. So then, um, so the other thing that I see, uh, the big breakdown, moms tr um, treat boys and girls as if they're the same um, sex, but they're not. And so my question is, how do you treat a boy versus girl? Go ahead, Maria. You need to treat them differently. Like, like it's a girl needs to tell her, like, oh, she's beautiful by nature, and um, that will bring a security to her life when she will grow up, and she will not find trying to find this um, appreciation from other people. She will know from the child that she's very good. Yes. Very beautiful. And yes. She, especially from father, it's very important. Yes, because uh, I see sometimes women want children to be for example confident and start talking by the way kids in the first five ten minutes they're naturally shy because they don't know a stranger why should they talk to a stranger and then mom looks at him don't be shy come here and talk no this is normal they feel like they want to hide they want to stay quiet because they don't feel comfortable and uh, a daughter if a mom constantly tells her don't do this don't do this don't do that don't do that she grows up to be insecure because every time you're saying one criticism you gotta say 10 appraisals that she's beautiful that she's sweet she's your little princess and that's gotta happen all the time um psychologist in 1970 something did the test they decided to record a mom and uh, mom, uh, mom and a son without them knowing. And how many times did mom criticize her son in 12 hours? Who wants to guess? 80 times. 80 times. So that means every five minutes she was criticizing him. Do you think a child has any comprehension what mom wants from him? Absolutely not. At age five, which is now we're transitioning to, at age five, a child transitions to the stage called five to 14, 13, because kids in the United States and actually everywhere now develop much faster, I would say even 13. This is a student. They're no longer king and queen. But the problem is with mothers, 
they sometimes continue to treat them even at age eight and nine that they're king and queen and by the way if you don't transition smoothly to age five or six that they are now a student they will stay until they die a king and queen and that means they would want you to spoil them because they liked it and so the transition is very important and here during the stage what do you think the most important to a child Thank you, Alona. Discipline. By the way, uh, discipline is the worst thing you can do to a child. And now we'll explain why. When you understand a child and what they need from 5 to 13 and 14, the more than anything is understanding. And if you understand them, you won't need to discipline them. Because that's how they get love. Zero to five, they need to hear, I love you, you're beautiful, you're doing great, keep moving, keep walking. But at age five, you transition to understand them. And now, this is now the biggest difference. At age five, a boy, what usually does he do? He comes home and says, Mom, I played with my friend Anthony. We were running and I got faster. What is he trying to say? I beat him. Yeah. I beat him. And what does he want for this? Appraisal. Appraisal. And if you tell him, wow, I am so proud of you. You did a good job. He is bringing you the result. Right? And so to a boy, you cannot just tell him, oh, you're so cute. Because he is born cute. Because then you are mm, giving him something that he did not work for. And that's why it's important to appraise boys for what they're achieving. So he got a good grade. You're saying, wow, I'm so proud of you. Good job. And he feels proud. Boys more than anything needs to feel appraisal and proud and you acknowledging them. And for again, for every creed and, and how you now talking about discipline. How you motivate them to discipline is that you give 10 appraisals and one teaching. Mm -hmm. For example, you tell him, you're a good boy. I'm proud of you. You can do it. Wow, what a great job. You said those 10 things. And then you all of a sudden say, and by the way, you know what? Let's work on this math because math is going to help you later with this and this problem. And he listens. Because you are now building a really strong relationship with him. Because to a child, during the stage, to a boy, love is through understanding, means everything. And that's how he's starting to see you as older. You remember mom, child, father? And that's how he sees you as mom, that he respects. Dad, as he respects. And when children feel this love through understanding, they will listen. And do, I told you so, you got to do this. I told you go home. I told you to clean the dishes. Not working. The children at some point hears that like, like a choo-choo train. <laughs> train or whatever. You get that? It's pointless. It's like the lecture that is you telling them the same thing and same thing back. They don't hear it. They don't hear it. Um... Let me move this back so I look where I am. Any questions? How do you treat uh, differently uh, female and male in you know, that period? Of yes, time? yes, yes. That's where I'm going right now. Um, one second. I also have a question about yes. uh, when a uh, younger child, like around five or so, favoring one parent. Say that again. When younger child uh, favoring one parent compared to other, over, over oh. the other. Oh, can you give me example? Is it oh, a son? Girls. girls, they girls like who want, better? You know, they want all the only daddy. Daddy? Well, first of all, girls are closer to daddies. Not always, but usually because um, until three, children need more than anything, mom or dad? Mom. Mom. 
at two and three, they start to transition towards dad, then they transition back to mom. But at some point, they transition girls towards the daddy because how dad treats them, they will feel, if the dad treats them like princesses, they will later seek a man who will treat them like princesses. If dad gonna treat them or mom, dad is cheating, dad is lying, dad is ignoring mom's needs and ignoring her, she will later seek a man like that. And boys typically fall in love with who? With moms. And therefore they're gravitating towards moms. Very seldom, sometimes girls, because dad is very authoritative, they could gravitate towards mom. But usually the daughters are closer to dad and moms are closer and girls are closer to moms. Really good question. Yeah. Hmm? Boys, 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 moms. boys, exactly. <laughs> Um, any other questions? Also, what I see, uh, going back to zero to five, because I skip, I see that. Uh, moms will tell kids, stop drinking Coca-Cola. Stop drinking Coca-Cola. Why is she hasn't Coca-Cola at home? <laughs> stop eating fast food. Stop eating fast food. It's not good for you. Why are you having fast food? Or why are you going to Chick-fil-A or McDonald's? It's kind of nonsense, right? Or bigger problem now, they're telling, stop playing on the video games on the phone. Who gave him that phone? Who gave him that phone? And what happens is uh, moms put the phone in front of children at age one, and they start feeding them. And so now a brain of a child thinks, okay, food associated with phone. Yeah. I want phone. And they start screaming and yelling. This is moms who are really working full time and they don't have the energy to children. To them, it's like, okay, success, money, goals, or whatever is more important. And she has no energy now because kids want all the time mom's attention. Zero to five is love, right? But five to 14. Now, we had a spring break a week ago or two weeks ago. <clears throat> well, it was challenging because... Every 30 minutes, Alexi, mom, let's play, tag. 30 minutes, mom, let's play hide and seek. Mom is playing hide and seek. 30 minutes, like, mom, let's go to the playground. Let's play hide and seek there. <laughs> then one hour later, mom, you know what? Let's me take a Jeep and we'll go around the subdivision and you'll chase me. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> Two hours later, mom, sky zone. I want to jump. Okay, sky zone. Three hours later, dad comes home. Mom and dad, now I want you both to play with me hide and seek. <laughs> so through playing, they're learning. And that's how they feel that they love. And if you're ignoring that because, again, you don't have energy because you work, they don't feel loved. Now I have one of the uh, friends of mine who, whose dad is very strict and disciplined. Let's put it this way. And every time I tell her, let our kids do play dates, let our kids do sleepover. Uh, right now he's under punishment, two weeks, no sleepover, no play dates. And, and I'm asking, okay, uh, what did the child do? This, he disrespectfully talked to my husband. Now, question to you, why did the child talk disrespectfully to her husband? Because she talks to him in the same way. Because dad is disrespecting mother. He's speaking it up. It could be the other way around. He's speaking the same language and he does the same thing with that and with her. And now, because they don't know how to talk to him, they're on top of it punishing him. Do you get the nonsense of this? And the main point of a parent is to build such a close relationship with a child where they don't need to punish. If a parent's punishing children, that means they're not effective. They don't know what they're doing. And going back to how you treat girls, it's 5 to 14. She understands love is when you spoil her unconditionally. Girls, during this stage, she wants a dress, pink dress, pink dress. She wants this kind of thing for her hair, you get her this boss for her hair. She wants the shoes, you buy her shoes. She wants this makeup, you buy her this makeup to play with. You gotta spoil her because she's who? She's Little princess, even though she's now a student, but you continue to spoil her 
by giving her whatever she wants. Now, if you don't do that, what do you think will happen? Not only that, she will not gonna feel love, but when she's 20 and 30, one of my clients came in years ago to me and he said, Alisa, and he was a very wealthy man, had a lot of businesses here in Atlanta. He said, Alisa, what can I do? My wife is spending $50,000 on shoes, clothes, and purses every month. Every month. She's shopaholic. Why? Because she didn't She's compensating. Now, you see a lot of men now playing video games. Do you know what happened to them? They were not playing 5 to 14. Parents were not playing with them. So now what they're doing? They're playing video games. And by the way, they're spending a lot of money on those video games. And sometimes gambling because it's a game. It's a game. Because nobody played with them from 5 to 14. So I'm knocking on my girlfriend's. Come on, get your son to play. Under punishment. What the result's going to be, we'll see in 10, 15 years. So everything that you do right now, and we as a parent, we want constant gratification right now. We want him to say love me to me. We want to enjoy them. We want to feel like we own them. And we're making mistakes now, but 5, 10, 15 years from now, it's going to hit us hard when they're going to be dealing with all kinds of range of problems. What are you hearing? Quick exercise for you, pair up and share where do you see either your parents made the mistakes, your relatives, or you see you making a mistake. So share and what was the impact because you did not play with your kids, your parents did not play with your kids and you see the impact right now on you. Pair up, two, two, two and share. Same thing here with you guys. If you can write it down where you made a mistake with your kids. Or did your parents made a mistake with you? Write it down so you can get present to it. Thank you. We'll be back in two minutes.